Hey, what's up, people? I've got this device here that's a, a JVC DT X92 HX2. And this is a rack mount device that has two 8.9 inch IPS displays on it. Each display has a resolution of 1920 by 1200. So it's a pretty nice piece of kit. It even includes uh, speakers here. It's got HDMI inputs, like one for each display. It supports uh, SDI inputs, and I believe it also supports a composite video input. And this was uh, actually given to me by a friend who was, uh, they were working in some office or whatever, and I don't know if they were just like removing some of the equipment or replacing it or whatever. He uh, texted me a picture and he said that this was getting chucked if I wanted it. And I was like, heck yeah. <laughs> so um, he just sent me a picture of it with it, you know, like already removed and everything. So the displays were just black. But uh, when I got it, I realized, and right now here, I just have an image of a board that I have sitting here on the bench up on the, uh, under the microscope. But if I turn up the brightness on the ring light, you can see that we get these like brown splotches right here, along with all these um, like little spatters of something, no clue what that even is. And like I said, I had no idea that was even uh, an issue with this thing when he sent me the picture because it was off. So, uh, yeah, I think this would be a pretty useful device if I could get it to uh, look good. I mean, even with the brown splotches, it's really not that bad. But, I mean, it's kind of more of an annoyance than anything. So, I can't tell if this looks like it's something that's like maybe like seeped in or something. So, we're going to have to take the uh, displays apart and see if uh, anything can be done about these. And the funny part is, is that they look pretty similar. Like, you can see we kind of have like a curvature right there. And like on the on the sides here, it kind of appears to have like the same shape. So no idea what that's all about. I don't know if it's like damage to the actual display itself. But yeah, we're going to have to open it up and uh, see what's going on, if uh, anything uh, visible. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect everything and we'll open it up and see what's up. Okay, so I'm not sure what all needs to come off. As we can see, we've got four screws right here. And we've also got six screws along the top there and i mean three screws on top and three screws along the bottom hey what's this void if removed huh what can we do oh oh, oh shoot oh man i just uh voided it dang oh well anyways um actually now that i think about it i think these uh four screws right here were holding a bracket because the power supply had a mount back here and i think yeah i removed that so i think that's what those screws are so i don't think I need to remove those. Don't know if I need to remove the ones right there on that power supply input and then the ones for the uh, these two uh, nine pin terminals, but let's see. Okay, these screws, at first I thought they were just gonna be like um, small, tiny like head screws, but I none of my little uh, hex bits were uh, fitting in there. So looking at it up close, it appears that they are Torx, but it looks like they're supposed to be like a security Torx, except that it looks like the center pin on these has been broken off. They're all like that. So I believe I do have the um, security uh, bits that would fit this, even though at this point it's really not necessary. But it appears that this device may have been opened before. Yeah, so a T6 bit definitely fits in there pretty nicely. And these are, they're not very tight. So they're coming off right away. Okay, so uh, these screws had nothing to do with it and the back is still not releasing. So I'm wondering if it has something to do with these uh, mounts on the uh, nine pin connectors. So let's see That's coming up. Okay. There's some wires going to the uh, power connector uh, One's ground. Let me turn this up like this Okay, so there's a two pin connector going up to this board over here There he goes And then there's a ground down here Looks like it's one of the same type of uh, little uh, Torx bits there, so I can, or Torx uh, screws. So if I just hold the nut, there we go, it's coming out. Ah, all right, so there's the ground. So we've got two identical boards in here, so both of these displays are the exact uh, same thing, so they just have a, a, like a little interconnect here for the power, so power can go to like either one of these boards and uh, go back out to one of the other ones. So these here are both going to be like connected in parallel, basically. Uh, we see we've got the uh, little speakers down there. So looks like if we just remove these four screws off of each display, this entire unit should come up. But I'm going to remove this from here. 
Oh, and I guess the reason it's so hard to remove is it has some adhesive on there. I don't know if it's going to be a visible there. Yeah, that white stuff right there. So let's see if I can get that to come off. There it goes. Okay. Okay, that's all four or the that's all four screws removed off the first display. Will this pop out? There it goes. So yeah, each one of these is its own separate module, basically. Comes up with the uh, knobs and everything. There we go. We can see that there's metal back there, so this is going to be like basically an entire uh, module all by itself. So if I remove this tape off of this connector, set it over here off to the side, and then pull this off here. All right, the little tabs up. This should release. Ah, of course not. They glued it in place. See right there? It's got some adhesive. That's really weird. There's like a bunch of LEDs back here. Thought they were capacitors at first, but even then it seemed kind of odd. But no, it seems to be a bunch of like, um, maybe bicolor or tricolor LEDs. That's so odd. I wonder what it does. Okay, so this is going to be extremely risky, but I'm going to try to take this pick here and just like gently run it along the bottom like this, trying to scrape off as much of that adhesive as I can. And uh, this side angle might not be a good angle. I think, yeah, there we go. This is gonna be a much better angle. So you can see right there, it's sticking out this, the, the back side there. So I'm just going to kind of gently scratch across it. And it's getting caught up on something there. Okay, so that's not working. So I'm gonna try to just push it underneath like this. And hopefully it'll separate the adhesive from the board. Now, something is stopping it right there, like right in the middle. I wonder if there's a capacitor like right down here. Okay, and I can't seem to be making much progress there. So a change of plans. I'm going to remove all the screws off the board and then I'm gonna to try to tilt the board out that way. Let's see. Yeah, okay, so it's coming up. Let's see how much I can tilt it out this way. And Okay, so it looks like they use silicone, like right here on the edges, but right there in the middle, it's something harder. It almost feels like an epoxy, so that's why I can't quite pull it out, or I can't pull the um, the pick straight through, and I thought there was like a cut out there on the board, but it's not. It's that um, hard, uh, this hard material in here. All right, let's see. Maybe we can try to gently... Try to cut sideways like this with this blade. There it goes. Now we should be able to pull this ribbon out. There we go. Whew. I don't think I did any damage to it. Okay, we can set this board aside. Oh, well, before we do, <laughs> there's two FPGAs on this. There's two uh, Xilinx Spartans on there. I'm going to guess that these are probably uh, like digital... Some sort of like digital video converters there, another one. And then down here is probably going to be like the, the main scaler or something. Looks like maybe this could be attached to a, like a separate type of display right there. That's uh, another interface right there. It looks like that's going to be an output. So this board probably be used for uh, multiple different types of displays. And let's see if we can pop this display out. So that's coming out the bottom there. It doesn't seem to be crazily glued in or anything. Try to not bend it too much so I don't break it. Yeah, it's coming off fairly easily. So it doesn't even look like it was glued in at all. It's just kind of friction holding it in place. I'm going to set this down here on this blue napkin just to prevent anything scratching the, the front surface there. But looks like we're going to have to remove this uh, black tape that's like around the edges. That's holding the glass onto the, uh, the backlight. To put this back together, I can probably just maybe like use some Kapton or something because I don't know if this is going to stick very well anymore. Oh, that's just covering off the driver, so maybe I'll just leave that alone. Okay, I'm going to remove these. And then hopefully that'll allow me to tilt this board off that way. 
Well, actually, it looks like this entire sort of like plastic backing needs to come off of the from the back um, can right here. So I'm going to carefully stick a blade on along the edge. I'm kind of playing with fire here now because at any point I could slip in. <laughs> Totally scratch up that the the uh, polarizer right there. There we go. There's one. There's two. Three. I don't see any along the top here. Okay, I'm starting to think maybe there's some adhesive or something holding it in from the. The top portion here because I'm sticking this blade in on the edge and then I'm just kind of prying up and it's separating. I'm trying to be super careful. There it goes. All right. Oh, there it is. So, what is that? Almost. That's weird. I've never seen that before on a display or an LCD or anything like that. So at least it's not the LCD or the, yeah, the IPS LCD. So that's uh, at least uh, pretty promising. So now I'm going to set this aside where I'm not going to damage it. Yeah, there it is. Let's look at that up close. So there's a close look at one of those, and it's really hard to focus on it because it just diffuses the light so much. I'm trying to focus on it like right there. That's about as focused as I can get it. So I cannot tell what that is. Me rubbing on it like that doesn't seem to make a difference. Um, let's see what happens if I apply some alcohol to it. Okay, so I have alcohol on a cotton swab here. Let's see what happens. Can I rub that off? Hmm. Well, it's not on this side at least. So let's flip it over, take a look at the other side and see if it's on the opposite side of this diffuser. I'm not sure if that's it right there. Turn on the brightness here. Let's see. Nope, that's not coming off. That is so weird. It's almost like, like if something was burned into the, the material. Yeah, that's not coming off. Oh, so it turns out there's two layers. So it's probably in between both of these. There we go. See, look at that. So I'm going to separate these and try to go back in there and see which side it's on or if it's on both. And yeah, it's stuck together. Ah, there it goes. I wonder if these were little bugs that got in there. All right, let's see what happens. Try to rub this off right here. Oh, it went away. Uh, there I am focused on one of those little spots. And let's see, can I find it with the swab here? Where is it? There it is right there. So let's see. Yeah, that does clean up. So it looks like if we just clean this thing, it should be okay. Except... No, this side doesn't have like a bunch of little ridges on it or anything, but I think the other one does. Nah, they both kind of do. Let's see. There we go. There's a fairly large spot right there. Let's see if that'll clean up or if it's uh, damaged the material. Uh, nah, that looks like... It looks like the material there is damaged. Yeah, so it cleaned off, but the material is damaged. You can see there's kind of a little bit of a crater in there. There's another spot right there. Yep, there's a little crater right there too. So this is the current status. I've got both of the sheets here and I tried cleaning the um, upper layer sheet and it cleaned up pretty well. You can kind of still see like a little bit of smudging in there where the stains were. But it's nowhere near as bad as it was, and technically, the you can see right there, the stains are on that side. Right there where it looks kind of uh, blotchy, I think that's where I tried to, to clean it off with the alcohol. So I'm not sure if it affected the plastic a little bit there, but it may have. 
But once it's like in this uh, direction, you can't really tell. So that might not affect things uh, very much. So this one looks decent. I mean, it's not awesome anymore, but it looks decent. This one here is the one that has the the actual like staining. And um, I'm wondering if maybe there's like a some sort of metalized layer that gets deposited on this and whatever um, that stuff it is here, maybe like reacted somehow and it like oxidized or something. There's no saving this one. As you can see, those spots right there where the, like where I cleaned it right here in this area, like it's just completely see-through now. So that's going to let like probably way too much light through. And it's just going to have like a, instead of having a bunch of little brown spots, it's going to have like a bunch of little uh, bright white spots. So this one, unfortunately, cannot be saved. And it's just weird how this one, uh, which was the uh, monitor on the left, it looks, the stain itself looks pretty identical to the one on the right. I'm wondering if maybe there was like a bad batch of these things and somehow they were all kind of affected in the same area. And that's why the, um, the stains look pretty similar. Cause I can't think of like any other explanation as to why, like they would have that sort of like same sort of pattern. I mean, the, like the spattering sort of, uh, stains here or the, like the little dots, uh, stains, uh, those are, you know, a little more random, but that one in the middle there looks pretty similar on both. So anyways, since I can't, um, easily replace this or anything like that, I was trying to think if I had something on hand that maybe I could use to, uh, like replace this sheet and, uh, thanks to the magic of hoarding. Okay. I'm not really a hoarder or anything like that. And even though my wife would probably claim that I am, <laughs> I prefer the term, uh, inventory enthusiast. Uh, I had this uh, broken LCD here that I kept the, like, the, um, well, basically I have, like, the entire thing, but I kept these uh, sheets and the uh, backlight here. And so it's got various sheets of a similar material. You can see that this top one here looks pretty damaged. It's got, like, a little gouge right there. But that's because this one's, like, completely exposed, you know, to the <laughs> to the elements. But if we look at the layer directly below this, and it's making the camera go out of whack, but this layer here, looks pretty similar to the one that's damaged on the smaller LCD. And this is gonna be like really hard to show here, but uh, this one is thinner for sure because it's obviously on like a very thin LCD. This one was for like a, um, what, like a 24 inch LCD. So it's a little bit thicker, but I think the material might be the same. Now, I'm not sure if this is a like a collimator or a diffuser or what exactly. I don't know all the uh, terminology. There's also some like prism sheets that go in uh, to like um, inside of LCDs. So I think this might be a prism sheet, but I don't know for sure. So I think if maybe if I can find the correct orientation for this, because it appears that there are like certain like patterns and lines, maybe I can cut out a piece of this material. Um, shape it the, uh, you know, the same shape as this one and put this underneath the other one, the way that it's supposed to be layered in the LCD. And maybe, uh, that'll get it uh, working again. I mean, it works without, even without these two, I actually tested it. You do get an image, but I think it's just not as bright as it would be if you, you know, properly, um, diffuse the light and all that stuff. So that's what I'm going to try to do. I'll, first of all, let's go ahead and move this out of the way. I think I might be able to get an idea of which orientation this should be on or at if I like maybe turn these around like that. Like, well, let's see. All right. So I've got this little test setup going here that I'm going to use to try to determine the correct orientation for that sheet that sits below this uh, top one. And so what I've got here is I've got this glass sheet sitting on top of a couple batteries. So that way I have some room right here on the bottom. And as you can see, this uh, glass sheet is already uh, pre-broken from for a uh, maximum danger. And so I'm going to take my phone here and I got the flashlight on. And as you can see, when I have the phone like right up against the glass, we get, you know, just a little bright spot there of the uh, LED. But as I pull it back, you can see how it sort of like separates into sort of like a square pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top sheet here and I really should be wearing gloves for this. So I don't leave a bunch of smudges on it that I have to clean off after the fact. But this is the uh, top sheet. Going to move that out of the way. I'll take this one out. And I'll grab the other one, set it up on here, and then put this back on top of the other one. And then we'll see uh, what position this has to be in to get the light to uh, do a, sort of a similar pattern. There we go. All right. So if it's right up against the edge, the way I had it with the other sheet, let's see what happens. Here we go. Uh, yeah. See, that does not have the same uh, 
sort of pattern. So if I rotate this to, oh, so it's going to be about like a 45 degree difference then. There we go. We got the same, pretty much the same exact uh, sort of pattern there. And that's what we want. So I just have to uh, make sure that this is at a 45 degree angle and then cut a couple of sheets that are going to be about the same size as this. So we'll say something like that. Yeah, that should work. No, oh, that was easy. All right, so I decided to check it with a protractor here. It's not 45 degrees. It appears that it's more like 120 degrees or uh, 60 if we're uh, measuring it from uh, this direction. So yeah, I guess if I uh, cut it at about that angle, I'll get the uh, most accurate uh, positioning there as possible. All right, I've got the LCD reassembled with a new sheet of material along with the uh, old one that uh, cleaned up. And it was a lot more tedious to cut out the sheet than I was uh, hoping that it would be. But uh, I was trying very hard to like not scratch it up. I had like padding on it. I put it over a cutting mat and I used a, a big like a sheet of like a circular cutter. And I tried to like get everything positioned as best as possible to like get the uh, straightest cuts that I could. And then uh, to cut out like the small uh, little spots where it's got like the little tabs, I used a, a, a box cutter with like a brand new blade on it. And it wasn't exactly like totally perfect as I would have wanted it to be, but it was good enough. Uh, it was just a, kind of a pain trying to get it back into the frame. It like none of it wanted to go in, but and also because that new sheet is slightly thicker than the original one, so it took a little more work to get it in than than I thought it would. But it's all put back together, and we can put it back into uh, the, the frame here and connect it back up and see how it looks. I haven't put like any tape around the uh, edges yet or anything like that. I just have it uh, held in with uh, little clips that it already had. I'm going to apply 12 volts to the connector right here. I'm not going to use the, the original power supply. All right, there we go. So I've got power going into it. I'm going to hit the power switch here. It turned green, so that means that it should come on. There it is. So, And it's not going to show anything because there's obviously no video input. But let's hit the menu, see what that looks like. Hey, that's looking pretty good. Now, obviously, here in the garage, it's like nowhere near a uh, clean room condition. So I was using uh, a bunch of like microfiber cloths to uh, try to clean everything once I was done uh, cutting it. But I can't really tell that there's anything like um, blocking light or anything in the way. It all looks pretty good. So, yeah, now that I've done the uh, first one here, I think that I'm going to do the same to the uh, second one. And uh, these should be fine. <laughs> They're work. I mean, it, it still works. It's like I said, it's, it's just uh, the fact that it would like leave those like brown splotches on it and all that. But this is looking um, <laughs> way better, obviously. OK, so I took the second display apart and I removed uh, both of the sheets that are in it. And you can see right there where all that staining is. I have not replaced it yet, though. And I actually haven't even cut out the new one uh, for this one. But I thought I'd hook it up to the microscope again and let's see if there's or how much of a difference in the image or brightness quality there is with this one here that I've already replaced the uh, sheet in and this one here that I have not replaced the sheet in and it's actually missing uh, both of the sheets uh, from in between the LCD and the uh, backlight. So I'm going to switch over to the microscope now. I just have to uh, plug my HDMI cable over here and plug it in and they should come on and there we go. So. I don't know how well this is going to look on camera, but I think we can see that this one, I, I made sure that all the settings on both of these were the exact same, like all the brightness, contrast and all that stuff before I actually applied an image to it. So you can tell that this one for sure has a brighter image than this one. So those um, sheets do make a difference in how much light gets uh, brought out to through the uh, display itself. Let's see, I'm going to turn up the brightness here to uh, make the image on the microscope, like just kind of go all blown out. Oh, yeah, look at that. So this one here definitely looks a little bit dimmer than this one. And the cool thing is, yeah, well, we'll actually, I mean, just looking at it here in person, I can't tell that there's like any debris or any like little particles or anything in a completely wide image. So I think that's going to work out pretty well. So I'll finish cutting out the one for this one. I'll replace everything. And after that, they should be pretty identical. All right, so I got the second sheet cut out. And this actually turned out uh, way better than the first one. But then again, I knew what to expect and I kind of knew what I was doing. Uh, the other sheet though, I tried to clean it up as best as I could, but there's still like some little splotches right there of where the material was stained. 
You can see some down here too. But since the light's going to be all diffused, hopefully they won't be uh, too visible. It's not like they're going to let more light through. It's just probably going to uh, diffuse a little more. So as I clean these, I kind of go from the outside or from the inside towards the outside to remove like all little bits of um, like lint and stuff right there. And I'm also using these um, like microfiber cloths. So once I get them all dust uh, dusted off, like as uh, best as I can from at least from what I can tell, that one there looks uh, pretty good already. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall these, and then uh, that's pretty much it. That should be done. Okay, I've got these reconnected the exact same configuration again, except that now this one has uh, both of the uh, sheets inside of it. Um, so both of these should be identical. All the settings were the same. I didn't change anything. So I'm going to uh, plug in the HDMI from the microscope back in again, and right now they both have power, so it should come right up. There we go. There it goes. And... Uh, I don't know if it's just me. Maybe this one here still looks uh, not as bright as this one. That's kind of weird. Let's see. Let's uh, make it completely bright. Let's blow out the image here. Yeah, it looks like maybe this one's just not as bright as that one. But it's not as uh, drastic of a difference as it was at first. Let's see, that's the brightness. Right now it's set at 70, and this one's at 70. Yeah, so both have the same brightness. Contrast is at 50. 50, yeah, like I, those should be all identical. So, yeah, maybe this display here is just not as bright as uh, that, or the backlight on this one's just, for whatever reason, just not as bright as the other one. But, I mean, <laughs> as you can see now, there's no more uh, brown blotches, and uh, the image looks, I mean, it's totally useful, so it's not uh, all crappy anymore. Actually, in person, it's very, very hard to tell that there's a, a difference in uh, image brightness. It's, uh, if anything, it's like really, really subtle. I think the camera maybe picks it up a little more, but... Yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, it's a, certainly a lot better than it was. All right, so the last thing I'm going to do is since I removed the tape from like around the, the left edge here and the top edge of both of these displays, I'm going to replace it, but not with the same tape that I removed. I'm actually just going to use like a thin or a strip of like capped on tape, like around that edge and around that edge, and then just like kind of like fold it um, around the back of uh, both of these. And uh, that should be it. I'll make sure that I give the uh, screens themselves a good cleaning here, remove any smudges I may have left on them while it's like easily accessible. And then I'll reassemble it, and that should be it. And that's what that looks like with the cap on, if it would uh, focus. <laughs> Let's go to the back here. So, yeah, it's, I mean, it's wider than the original black tape was, but it's mostly just to hold like the very, very thin edge like in place so it doesn't like try to pop out or anything like that. I'm getting ready here to close this up now, and there's only two other quick little things that I kind of wanted to point out that I noticed. Um, they're not related to the display actually at all, <laughs> but there's a couple crystals on these boards, uh, one right there and one right there. And for some reason, <laughs> they're both crooked. <laughs> it's, it's like the only component that I've seen on both of these boards that's like for some reason not mounted uh, very well. So you can see right there on the left display, that one's kind of crooked a little bit, kind of um, clockwise. And then on the uh, right display, it's uh, crooked a little bit counterclockwise. So <laughs> it doesn't affect anything. It seems to all be working well. So I just thought it was uh, kind of funny. And then the only other thing I wanted to mention here is uh, I mentioned there was a bunch of uh, what looked like kind of like uh, red, green, and blue LEDs right here. But when I looked at the other side of the board, I realized that it looks like there were supposed to be a bunch of little transistors right here, but they've all been removed. So these LEDs are never going to work. There are, however, a few more LEDs right here. There's three of them. And I think those are actually meant to light up the, this sort of like little light pipe right here that's on the front of the, the display. But I've never seen that turn on. So I think that might be controlled with this like remote input here. Maybe to like identify maybe if like these two are like looking at different cameras, maybe to identify which one's live or, or something. So, so yeah, just using this with like the inputs here as they are and all that stuff like I don't think those are ever going to come on. I've never seen them come on. So it's just something that's there for like other environments.
All right, and there it is, all reassembled. So definitely much better image than uh, when we first started with all the brown blotches and the uh, spots. Now, if we look at, uh, we're not going to be able to see it on camera, but I can still kind of see where some of those uh, spots were where I couldn't like clean off the the material uh, completely. But it's really, really like not visible. I like I cannot see it in the camera at all. But in person, I can see it. Like there's a spot like right around here. There's like a spot right there and right there. But other than that, it looks pretty good. So if I turn this uh, the brightness up here completely, you can see that it just uh, looks like a pretty clean white image. No more <laughs> crappy spots on the bottom. So that totally uh, came out better than I'd hoped. Uh, at least it wasn't the LCDs that had a problem. So that's uh, going to do it for this one. And uh, thank you guys for watching once again. I'll see you all around the bench.